Şeytanir Radim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyyullah, Atiyya Rasulü ulul amri minkum inşaAllah. Uh, write uh, Hajish Shazad, inşaAllah you can recite Surah 13 verse 11 inşaAllah. And should I read the English after 13-11 inshaAllah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكته من خيفته ويرسل السواعك وفيصيب بها من يشاء وهم يجادلون في الله وهو شديد المحال صدق الله العظيم that was 13.11. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Lahu mu'akibatun min bayni yadayhi wa min khalfihi yahfuzunahu min amri Allah. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوء بقوم سوء فلا مرد له وما لهم من دونه من وال صدق الله العظيم. For men are angels of alternating duties in front and behind him who guard him by Allah's command. Indeed, Allah does not change his favor upon any nation until they change their own condition. And when Allah wills misfortune for a nation, it cannot be repelled, and they do not have any supporter besides him. And that alhamdulillah we draw our attention to Allah that Allah has angels who circumambulate insan, they're in front of them, behind them, all around them. So there's already an angelic force around humanity, people, insan, a person. And Allah is describing for us, for verily never will we change a condition of a people, a person. Instead of thinking plural, well, let's take it to ourselves. And never change a condition of a person until they change what's within themselves, anfusihum. So we don't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. But when Allah willeth a person to be punished, none can stop it. Kareem and we talked last night but it, it requires more attention and some nice animation and nice graphics for people to understand what Allah is, is giving to us of a reality that there's an angelic force all around us. And I don't change your condition be, although you're praying, you're praying and asking and making du'a and Allah is giving us the key that it's anfusihum. There must be something within you to change your condition and the key lies within yourself. And that's why Prophet gave to us who knows himself, arifa nafsuhu, will know his authority, arifa rabbahu. The inner world controls the outer world. Outer shaykhs even if they appear to be inner shaykhs because now nobody know who is a shaykh. But the inner realities and the guides of inner realities, they're teaching all the du'a in the world not going to change your condition. 
Only sana in the world doesn't change your condition just because you're asking for it. They come and say, prayer is powerful, this is powerful. Yes, it's powerful if Allah's pleased with what's inside you. If Allah's not pleased with what's inside you, the prayers are like a stick in the matchbook. They used to have matchboxes and you put a few sticks, it makes a lot of noise because it's empty, but when it's full it makes no noise. So the nation they infatuated with external acts of worship, keep posting all these du'as, du'as, du'as and external actions. Come Akhi, come pray with us, come pray with us, come pray with us. What Allah gave now as a key, anfusihum, I'm not going to change your condition of a people. So even you pray yourself or 10 people, I'm not changing you and your conditions of you people until each one changes what's in himself, anfusihum. And Allah gave a key that there's angelic power all around you. Why aren't you able to tap into that power? And then people have to contemplate because we keep talking, 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 throwing out all these jewels. We're going so fast because these are the last days. Maybe when we're dead people can go back to their books and read and reflect and maybe then think of a question. But because it's moving so fast, I don't think people contemplate. Take your notes and for the next four days until we meet again on Thursday you should have had an understanding, either you mastered it or the in-depth reality of it should have been what you're contemplating. Because these then become tools for us to progress, otherwise it's I don't know when we took like calculus or algebra the formulas became so complicated that by the second class I was, I was lost. Every time they put these complicated formulas it became more complicated, more complicated and you begin to lose people. The wisdom of asking people are there any questions because tariqah doesn't like questions. They don't like the questions that are from beginner's mode, don't ask those questions. They should get the books, so your reply to people should be, get the book, read and bring yourself up to speed otherwise the whole class is falling behind. But the question should be based on what was talked about and then that gives a, an understanding in these courses that people are actually studying this. And this becomes the importance of our lives and the, the tools that are given to us now as a survival. So when somebody sits and meditates that, ah, so let's separate the external people because they keep doing a lot of actions, posting a lot of things, oh akhi this du'a, oh and this du'a and, and this du'a and come to pray fajr with us and they do tabliq and they do all these things. But Allah is giving for those whom have the hearts of tafakkur that if you don't like the condition around you there's an angelic force, I won't change that condition until you go inside yourself and fusihim. If you don't have money how do you change your condition? If you don't have a job how do you change your condition? If you don't have health how do you change your condition? If you don't like the people around you, they're harsh, they're angry, they're like fighting me, attacking me, whatever people are emailing, Allah is giving to us the tools. All of these conditions will not be changed by merely requesting it and clicking our heels for it to change. Allah is giving anfusihum. That the key 
lies within yourself. And the angels are all around you waiting for your energy to be activated. This becomes then the understanding how to activate and as a result of this activation Allah can change many conditions. So in a science class we need a stronger force than ourself. So we have to bring out an outside catalyst to bring a fire on because this is like a lab experiment and you have to heat the elements. When I don't heat up because I didn't reach that point I need to bring a fire from the Divine the Presence. We describe ta seen tilka ayatul Qur'an, the fire of Prophet he is a fire, a Divinely fire which emanates nur. He's not nur only as a reflection but Allah is describing, no actually Prophet is a Divinely fire and his fire gives off light. Because the fire is more, power, more powerful than what it gives off of light is a source. So this immense fire dressed into the hearts of these awliya who understand these realities. Not everyone understands these realities but if we come across those whom understand this reality they're teaching. The existence of their reality is they carry a flame within their heart from the presence of Prophet They move upon this earth to ignite the flames. So when people sit to make contemplation and to activate anfusihum, what's within themselves that I have to change my condition inside. Look to the outside and you don't have your rizq, you don't have your job, you don't have health, you don't have uh, good people around you. Whatever people's conditions that are, are interesting for them, most are they don't have money, jobs and, and good friends and good people. Everybody is not content with what they have. Those conditions don't change until they decide, I'm going to start changing myself. Actually the key lies within me, not continuously asking that just make it to happen but you got to put some skin in the game and you have to now enter into your internal battle. And I need an outside catalyst. I need an outside fire in my science lab. And as soon as I sit and close my eyes and I ask for the madad of my shaykhs, they're like a flame that comes into my presence. And I'm asking from my heart that, I don't have that light, Sayyidi dress me from that light to the extent that I can carry, send that flame within my heart. And that's all the steps of the tafakkur that begin to breathe with that energy, breathe with that understanding. They breathe in the light, they do their awrad, they do their zikr, they're doing all their practices under the understanding of that tafakkur. Then as a result of understanding deeply that relationship that anytime they need to be lit up they immediately go into their tafakkur, they begin to do their awrads, their salawats and their zikrs. And each salawat that they're doing they feel an immense flame in their soul. The power of the soul is, is more luminous than anything on this earth. One soul can illuminate the entire earth, it's not something big. The soul has the immensity of power that can't be understood. But Allah not allowing that because these are the zulamat, 
These are the days that Prophet described for us, these are the end of days. Just as you look at the sun as a fire, look at space around the sun that seems to have no fire, then look at the earth where the fire now manifests. What type of miracle is that? That the fire, then all of a sudden the blackness of space where it doesn't illuminate anything in the space. And then all of a sudden on our earth we pick up the sunshine, we feel the heat of the flame and if you magnify that flame even more and put a little glass it'll burn and melt solid rock. How did it move through space and, and to this earth and manifest its power? This is Allah's miracles. Then the no-mind people they, they, they're astonished and they say, no this earth is flat so we don't understand how that operates because no brain, no, no faith. But as a result of that symbol Allah is showing that there can be people who walk this earth more powerful than a sun and all the zulm and darkness between them nobody will feel it. And when Allah has a servant who's like the ard, like the earth and Allah wants them to feel it, that soul immediately ignites and can begin to illuminate just one person in the room and not all of them. It has the ability to move and hit only the target Allah wanted it to hit. Everybody else can be dressed by a barakah but those whom Allah has destined for that reality they're the example of like an earth who can take that illumination of a sun and begin to bring it into their atmosphere and into their reality and feel the warmth of that presence. And others may left and right not feel anything, no, no warmth at all and even maybe repelled from the reality of that soul. This is Allah's miracles. This is when Allah describing God works in a mysterious way. I show you my signs upon the horizon and the more difficult is I'll show you them within yourselves. So we see it on the horizon. Now to understand within ourselves that if I want change the change and the key lies within. I need an external fire to come and light my heart. And when I accompany that fire and illuminate my heart, do my practices, ignite, then every salawat, every zikr, every prayer, every action is an illuminated action until that individual becomes lit, heated up. These are the times of ishraqiyoon in which Allah is putting a darkness and punishment upon the earth except whom Allah doesn't want to punish and that their being and their souls have sworn an allegiance to Prophet And Allah wrote for their hearts to be like suns on a dark night, stars on a dark night. And they and their lives are to await the presence of Imam Mahdi who's the Muhammadan Hadi the most guided Muhammadan soul to enter upon this atmosphere. So means the understanding of changing within ourselves and fusihum and begin all of the energy practice, all of the zikr, all of the understandings that the change lies within, the keys lie within. And everyone who complains, continuously complains 
then shame on you for not doing the work that requires inside of you. And you're looking for the McDonald's drive through version of somebody on the outside will change it. You don't like your condition, do your zikrs, do your practices that you've been asked. You don't like the money you make, do the zikrs and the practices you've been asked. You don't like the health that you have, you don't like the wealth that you have, you don't like whatever condition that you have, you don't like the people you have, then change within ourselves. Immediately now Allah is opening these angels around you are like a portal for you. Because if they're pleased with your practices and you begin to vibrate because these are all now just vibrations, that all these practices that are prescribed from the world of light are based on the soul and not the body because we know the change comes from within not without, not on the outside. You can't change anything on the outside, that's the rule of insanity. You do the same thing expecting a different result, there's no change on the outside. The power's inside. When they decide that they want to finally stop and make a change, this is now the understanding of moving through these vibrations. They do these practices, they increase their energy, they increase their zikrs, their salawats, what's happening now? The angels all around them are creating frequencies and energies. As a result of these frequencies and energies Allah is moving them into a different dimension. And these dimensions are subtle pages, they look all the same. Because all the same characters are all around but you're now on a different page. Your frequency and energy is much more powerful and the lower level people that were on your previous page they can no longer accompany you onto your new dimension, your new reality that Allah like a parda is moving you through. But when Allah wants to make the change it's not according to you and your will. Because some people then email that uh, they may not be content with the change they have. Because understanding this way of Allah is Allah's will will be done, not mine. I want to change. A change within myself and Allah begins to give permission to move. I move into one parda and all my old friends growing up, I don't even know them and they're lost, they have nothing to do with me. I don't even see them in my dimension and Allah can move a servant through these pardas. But not everybody that you want around you, Allah's moving into that dimension. So many people go and new people come. We gave the understanding of talking of an elevator up and down. When you're moving up it's not all the same people that were on the, the down floors and the lower floors but for the veils it's better to think of the horizontal line because the horizon you're moving on this line. And that's why these oceans of faith require a strong faith in Allah that Allah knows best and I know nothing. And as I'm in the ocean of taslim and submission they're moving and Allah changes a condition and it's not necessarily the way I thought it would be, most likely it's not anything the way I thought it would be because Allah Allahu Akbar is astonishing that He changes everything the way Allah wanted it. Because at a lower vibration you made all the wrong choices, surrounded yourself with all the wrong people and doing all the wrong things. Allah isn't taking the whole group up. But taking the one servant who decided that these conditions 
are not for me. And I know that Allah has something better for me. And as soon as they begin to change what's within themselves, this Ayatul Kareem Allah 13-11 is anfusihum, the key lies within you. So the students of the world of light they understood. You can ask all you want on outside but if the key of success is inside. When they understood and unlock the inner reality, now their movement through these pardas are based on their zikr, their practices that how much you want to move now. And now what's happening in your movement? That every time you're making your salawat and connecting your heart, you move through these pardas into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad What was the rule of paradise? Every time you go to paradise you can never leave. So then these souls whom they send their reality through these veils and they sit in the presence of awliya, nabiyeen, siddiqeen, shuhadahi wa salihin, their soul is always in the presence of this category of souls and Allah's promise in Qur'an is, I am with them, I am with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And this is the best of company. So every time they un- understood that they unlocked Anfusihim what's inside of them and they started to vibrate in their energy, they're moving. And when they move into these paradise realities, Someone else comes back and it's not them because Allah keeps what's in paradise and sends a different reality back. And they keep going and keep coming, keep going, keep coming until Allah is keeping them in their paradise realities and dressing them and blessing them. And the avatar that comes back onto this earth and back into the body is the recipient of these energies, these lights and those associations. The movement through these realities are immense. The power of these realities are immense. The gifts that Allah has for the believer are immense. And those that don't change what's within themselves, the conditions are going to get very bad. So what then Allah gives at the end? That if you didn't care enough to change your condition, because you say, oh everybody around is just bad, everything is bad, everything is bad. But Allah said, yeah everything's bad but I give you a key within yourself. If you choose not to use that key then Allah gives the warning, then when I deem punishment to come nobody's safe from my punishment. That's not the time to say, I'm going to now believe and do the work on myself because we know from spirituality if you don't continuously fix inside you will be lost by the outside. They showed a TikTok of a boy by water and it looked like it was a, like an ocean and it's moving very fast and he's on a wooden deck and they put a big X and say, don't do this and the man jumped in, the boy jumped in and immediately the current took him. It's something in his mind and, and probably out of ignorance you can't swim this current like a riptide. Sometimes the ocean there's a current so strong if it catches you, you don't have the ability to swim back and they saw, and they, they, they're filming him swimming until he gave up and then whew, took him faster than can be imagined. People don't have the choice to jump into zulumat at any time they want and to swim out of it. Because Allah is giving the warning, if you don't like the condition the key is within yourself. And if you wait long enough for the condition to become so bad 
Well then when Allah deems and writes for a, a condition of a people to be punished, oh, everyone going to get punished unless those whom changed what's within themselves and their reality actually moved and their spiritual reality is moving away from the conditions of these people. They literally move away from people. So Allah is giving us everything, every, every deep reality and deep understanding. And all of it comes back, the key lies within ourselves and within the power of the soul and to activate that power. And alhamdulillah that Allah gave to this the understandings that to connect to the Ulul Am who must take us to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And only then is the reality of the protection of A'udhu Billahi min shaitan al-Razeem. Before anyone can do anything, understand anything, they must have mastered the understanding of A'udhu Billah. In your life look to yourself and say, are you living a life of A'udhu Billah that are you in the presence of Prophet And where you go and what you eat and what you do, would Sayyidina Muhammad be doing that with you? If not, you left the A'udhu. And our life is to try our best to keep ourself in that presence. That when I eat this, yes inshaAllah Prophet would eat this and I eat. When I drink this, yes Prophet inshaAllah would drink this and I drink. And everything in our lives we try to the best of our abilities because we're in many difficult areas. People are living in all different types of communities, mashaAllah from all over the world people are watching. And we try our best to keep that. And at times where we come short we beg for forgiveness and ask Prophet to forgive us and then recalibrate our lives to again try our best to keep that presence and that teaches us that we are living a life of A'udhu Billahi min shaitan al-Razeem. So that the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem to dress us, how we speak, how we interact, how everything we do to keep the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad within our lives inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. So what we have from uh, our SMC families online inshaAllah and the animations and the videos inshaAllah great. Our people inshaAllah will take other people's animes that are acceptable and please post them onto TikTok, post them onto Instagram, post them onto Snapchat, post them onto I don't know what else people have. That put these uh, videos, put the short, the reels, the animes, everything from ourselves, from all other people whom are producing them. And that inshaAllah Allah inspire more people, more young uh, people to come and who have the technical savvy and the ability to produce these reels and then to spread them. And uh, for the younger people whom are using Discord, for office work, for business work and are familiar to log on to our platforms, Muhammadan Way on Discord and to share and any of our platforms that we use and you use, share it in social media that, oh come to here, come to this channel, watch this. Everything has an immense, go to the charity site, take them, it's on a, on a Shopify site. The charity is set up with each of these projects like a product. You can take the actual well, take and copy the box with the arrow up, copy the link, put it on social media and spread the charity's projects. And all of them again immense, immense uh, support, immense blessings and immense works. And people whom can't give a lot, they can at least share a lot. So there's a way for everyone to support and everyone to be productive and alhamdulillah our, our guys who are making the apps and, and putting out the productions and 
and the whole new face of the app is, is coming out soon inshaAllah and a whole bunch of different realities of an app uh, link with our own AI and uh, a knowledge base app. So alhamdulillah inshaAllah give more and more himma and do our, our greatest work until we hear the takbir of Imam Mahdi salam or we enter into the grave. But don't ever stop and don't ever just sit back doing nothing inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi if the world of malakut controls the world of mulk what is happening in the world of malakut that a nafs in the world of mulk can try to cut the relationship with the shaykh? The nafs is becoming too powerful and that's, that's the great danger that the relationship with the shaykh and the understanding of the bayat, even the person doesn't have to have bayat, we said the bayat is the imitation because you're just imitating a reality. But when you are destined with your guide and your, your final destination, you're docked, your heart is locked, you're taking daily from the teachings, the understandings, you built what we said now we have a virtual zawiyah. So it has all the elements of a traditional zawiyah but reaching now tens of thousands of people. If you went to a zawiya and you had room for 200 students but with the system that's been acted this zawiya has the zikr when it broadcasts out in two nights it'll have 3800 views. All of our other platforms they go up to 10,000 views and uh, maybe 15, 20,000 different active users when you see it being reposted onto different sites. So then if you take that 10, 15,000 students are active and they're active by emailing so they have a communication line with the shaykh, they're active by supporting and supporting through the charities, they're active by posting and propagating and spreading and liking and making comments because then all of the YouTube analytics are coming back that there's this many comments, this many thousands of views, this many shares. So this is active zawiyah, as long as the student is communicating with the shaykh and living a life of khidmat and learning the three days a week they sit down for a dars. There's nobody even doing that one time a week and we're doing it and asking for people to interact so that they feel, yes this is actually my teacher, I actually sit to hear from him. If I have a question that is good for the whole classroom we'll try to ask it. Don't be disappointed if the question was not related to the whole classroom, they can't ask it because it makes the whole class drop down. So those questions you send it to the email help me at nurmuhammad.com and then we have all these people mashaAllah volunteering and answering, putting out books, putting out articles, putting out posts. So alhamdulillah this is, this is now a very, very active virtual zawiya that reaching thousands of people. And the, the objective of that is that people reach to their reality and prepare for the difficulties that are coming. When they make their bond and they've taken their allegiance in their heart and their soul, what's been taught is your soul is now connected. So at a level of the soul they're connected, there's no way to pull from malakut apart. But what you have now is an understanding is now your body's in danger because your soul can't disconnect. It keeps with the Muhammadan community and the, and the presence of Prophet But it's just a sign for someone that why is your physicality, it's so out of control that it's breaking away and that's the danger. You know it's like a, a storm that's come and your ship has now undocked because when your ship is all tied you know when you own a boat they call you and say the storm is coming. Most clever people take their boat out of the dock, they take it onto dry lands, seal it up and keep it away. Those whom don't want to do that their boat is smashing around at the dock and getting holes in it because the waves are smashing it into the wood. And then some of the boats even tie off, their rope goes off and you see that boat drifting. You didn't harm the shaykh 
You didn't affect the tariqah because they're very powerful, very strong. But it's a sign that your physicality is going, drifting. Why is it drifting? So then we try to catch it and to come back. But this is not the time, especially when you're seeing all the bombardments and difficulties and horrific events that are happening. But that's why it's a, it's a great struggle that the shaitan and the nafs are continuously biting the hand that's trying to hold on to the shaykhs to let go, let go, let go, every type of waswas, let go, let go. And that's why they're again saying, meditate, contemplate, make sure your connection is very strong, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah On the topic of connecting to a charge greater than ours, we have felt an immense positive energy when a gift was given directly to the shaykh. From an energy standpoint, can you please expand on what giving a gift to our shaykh does to our souls? It creates a bond that everything we do we said the secret of all our actions was the ida. What, what do you give as a gift to those whom pass away? All your du'as, all your zikrs and at the end of every salah we have what's called the gift, the ida. That we're asking Allah that Allah that from everything I've done Ya Rabbi take out the imperfection Whatever is perfected and beautific granted to uh, the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad his Ahlul Bayt, his holy companions and all my shaykhs. Then you add in your relatives, your families, your parents, all your loved ones. These are the gifts we give to souls because they've passed. Then we go and make water wells for their souls, we give out food for their souls, why? So that their soul takes what we did from this dunya, this dunya of nothing, this is the dunya of the abode of difficulty and we give to their souls so that their souls bless it within their paradise realities and send back million times more of blessings. And what we call mushkil gusha that it… blessings that we don't know what it took away what it dressed us with, what knowledge did it grant us, what type of lives did it grant us. Because it's coming loaded blessings upon our soul. So when you have a living shaykh, you didn't wait for him to die to dedicate something to him. When you have a living shaykh it's an expression of love and that, I'm remembering you, I'm thinking of you. Just as you're hoping the shaykh is thinking of you, that's why we said that if you want to know how much your shaykh thinks of you, ask yourself how much do you think of your shaykh? It's no different, how much do you think uh, Allah loves you? And the answer is very easy, how much do you love Allah So, I love Allah so much, no, no, really how much do you love Allah What did you do for Allah So, I did this, I did this, I did this and then how much do you love Sayyidina Muhammad And every day we ask ourselves, then what did we do to show that love? And that becomes the secret of success in our lives. When we have a love for someone, show it to them, it's not hidden. You show it to them, you support them and you email the association, you, you send out the, the comments, you do the khidmat and all these people who are doing these khidmat, it's an expression of immense love and respect. You know, these reels that are coming out they're not easy to produce, the graphics that are coming out not easy to produce. The people who are doing all the different khidmats and, and every aspect of the tariqah it's not easy to do and take out your time where you could make money. But you go out and you do these services or you give a portion of your money as a donation or a gift. All of it shows a sign of immense love. When we show that love then we in our, in our hearts should know that, no as much as I love this shaykh and showing it, I know that his nazar and his love is upon me. So that, that's the tariqah, 
and we carry that forward all the way up to the presence of Allah the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why we do what we do and it's the way of uh, immense manners and adab inshaAllah. We said before people are, are, are sending their salams and jummah and everything as if they were there. The people at a distance they have a lot of uh, admiration and, and adab and they're continuously sending these, these types of understandings and, and that they're praying for us and, and giving Jummah Mubarak and everything. And this is the way that the tariqah should be. Although the tariqah is virtual now with uh, thousands of people, this is Im- important that they have to show the, the immense amount of love and respect. And at the same time the shaykh is showing that back by making himself available to talk three days a week. I don't know if anyone ever seen a shaykh talking three days a week asking people questions or answering people's questions. They don't make themselves available. You barely can see them in an audience of you know 400 people or 200 people. So this is all a sign of trying to help and to reach people. And at the same time if they can show back that they have that love and admiration then they should feel in their heart that the nazar is strong upon them inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum uh, Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum As Salaam. Alhamdulillah for sharing these realities of electromagnetic energy. I am one who is severely affected by electrical energy from computers and phones. I've tried many things but nothing has worked. Can you help me? Get the meditation book, get your taweez, get all of the, the, the dress that's been given. That everything Prophet gave for us was energy. Keep your taweez, keep your siwak, have your ring. Keep an asa, keep your clothing in sunnah, grow your beard, (coughs) cover your head. All of these are for energy because if you do it right you're like a pyramid, you light up the entire city. You do it wrong and you be a light bulb for shaitan where you're just kind of taking and vampiring off your energy. So this is the way of energy, the way of tafakkur, the way of uh, a spiritual battle. So this is uh, you know the most important step, you get the meditation book, learn how to make your connection, then you get your energy book on how understanding the qudra and the movement of energy and the production of energy. And these become the foundations of your way and the practices inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. On the topic of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, is our understanding correct that our shaykh operates from the world of Malakut and is our key to Malakut in this world of Mulk? And is this the secret to being from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem to respect this relationship over all worldly relationships? Yeah, it's a. Uh So was that in the Bismillah Rahman Rahim talk? Because the understanding is correct that the shaykh is a representative of the world of light. Not all shaykhs, they were talking from the teachings that we're teaching. That this teaching is based on the love of Prophet and anyone who hears it should have a clue that it must be pretty deep connection to this ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad whom he is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. The Prophet carries that title and the reality. So anyone representing that, that light and that love to the depth of this reality to teach only about the ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad then yes because that becomes the Muhammadan representative for you. How you treat that Muhammadan representative 
is how Allah would deem you treated the love for Prophet Do you know that if Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem falls upon the floor, what are you supposed to do? Immediately kiss it, put it on your forehead and put it away. Why? So that God forbid it be written for you that Allah's name Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem with all its realities fell to the ground you sat and just watched. It be written against you. So means the ihtiram and the respect that Allah is demanding from the written Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem by ink and on paper. What about those whom they carry that reality within their heart and their light and they represent the light of Prophet that became the way of adab and respect. When they respect that light, respect that relationship, respect the shaykh, what happens? The protocol begins to open within their heart and soul to move deeper into that reality. The one whom doesn't respect that reality then is denied the access to the presence of higher realities. It's like a protocol, you train with the shaykh when the love and the respect is at a level in which Allah is, is deeming to be sincere, then they begin to have all of their witnessing beginning to open. Because if they respect the one on earth, imagine the respect they'll have in the heavens, in the world of light. But when they didn't understand and respect the ones on earth, they probably have no respect for the ones in, in the world of light. As in something is off in the character of the individual. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Can we also understand that these angels are guarding, are guarding these conditions and not some black magic as mostly we believe that we lose a job or our condition is due to magic or other people doings. Please forgive our bad adab. Yeah, I don't think it's a confusion between angels and magic but the angels stand guard for when you're ready to prepare your insight. So if you go back to the teaching we don't focus on the problem because many of your countries that's all they talk about because that's the business they run. Oh you have a jadu, you have this, you have this, you have this then give us money. So it's a business and a racket for them. The focus of tariqah and the perfected ways of tariqah is that we don't care about the problem just figure out your solution. So no matter if there's 20 devils around your house and you say, I don't want this condition anymore and pray, 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 all the saying, eh, it's not going to change, these devils are standing right there. The angels are waiting that you unfusi home. Didn't you know what the shaykh just said? Fix yourself. Then it sparks for some people the whole of the teaching for 25 years, fix yourself. Make your connection, make your muraqabah, do your salawats, build this love and ishq for Prophet and then what happens? The angels start to come in and they begin to guard you as you're trying to make your connection, they begin to assist you in making your connection and as soon as you make that connection they begin to activate everything around you. Because you're obeying what Allah wanted. Now imagine the reverse that it's not about inside, it's about outside. Then every time people had devils around and black magic around, it was all about only in outside. Inside they do every type of crazy thing. Inside they lie, they cheat, they steal, they steal money from people at their stores, they, they do every kind of crazy thing most people are doing. And they just go to somebody and say, make du'a and make this go away. 
because it's the, the, the condition will change only from the outside if what's their thinking is true. Then everybody would have a place that they could go to make a du'a and everything now would vanish, all the conditions would vanish and everything would be great again. You would still be rotten inside. And then when you went to the grave you would think, oh why well, all these things went away from me but now I'm coming into the grave like a rotten apple, completely rotten. Then what happens in your grave? Horrific punishment. So a loving and caring creator wouldn't give that to us, saying, no, no, don't, don't play those games. There's nothing on the outside somebody can do for you. Your key and your solution is inside of you. Correct yourself, protect yourself, look to my character. Because anyone who wants to begin to perfect themselves, they have to look to themselves, maybe I shouldn't be bothering the people at that job, maybe I shouldn't be stealing this or cheating that or doing this, what all the horrible things that people do and maybe I should be correcting myself. And the tariqah ones definitely should be making connections and energies and practices. So yes definitely it seems like it should be common sense, fix inside. Because that's all that Allah cares for is the malakut, the soul. If you let your soul to become corrupted, you've angered Allah And if you perfect your soul and not to let it to be corrupted and, and grant the naqatullah, the camel of Allah access to Divinely waters, Divinely knowledges, then your camel's flourishing and Allah's happy with you. Now your outside condition can be resolved and these are as easy as moving through these dimensions, not something hard. And imagine when the dimensions actually begin to move, we said in horrific, horrific events that come, those whom supercharge their reality, they merely begin to focus and say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and they move completely different and people won't even see them in that space and they can come back later. So it means the movement through these pardas and through these energies, this is what we call haqiqat al-tai. Only now is haqiqat al-tai al-lisan is where they can do large amounts of zikr only through the tongue. But the actual through badan and through their body in the movement will open when these horrific energies begin and all the attacks that people are trying to do that we're going to be able to move through the world of light and souls inshaAllah. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين وحمد لله رب العالمين بحرمة محمد المصطفى بسير سورة الفاتحة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Shaykh Nurjan thank you for watching the video that you're watching inshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.